The video shows a wire placed in a magnetic field between the two poles of the horseshoe magnet. The wire is connected to a DC battery. Once the current flows in the wire, a force is exerted in the wire pushing it up out of the magnetic field between the poles. If the direction of the electric current is reversed, the direction of the pushing force is also reversed and the wire is pushed down. The most important thing now is to give a reason. Where did the pushing force on the wire come from? A better approach is to study a similar case. Two magnets. As long as they are far from each other, no force because they are far from each other. Now they are getting closer and also no effect. At a certain moment, the two magnetic fields overlap. Once they overlap, interaction between the two magnetic fields will take place, causing force. Two magnetic fields will now interact causing force, in this case, force of attraction. A simple experiment you can do at your home. From this experiment we can conclude that any overlap between two magnetic fields will cause interaction between them. This interaction will cause a force. So let's put this conclusion in mind and go back to our case. We have two poles of a magnet and we have a wire. There is a natural magnetic field between the poles of the magnet. For the wire, when current flows, this will generate a magnetic field as we said before. Now have a look in this region. It's an overlap between two magnetic fields, just as if they are two magnets. This overlap will cause an interaction between the two magnetic fields that causes a force on the loose wire. So we can explain the force on the wire as follows. Magnetic field of the current in the wire interacts with the magnetic field of the magnet, causing force on the wire. Another suitable explanation is that we can directly say current in the wire interacts with the magnetic field of the magnet, causing force on the wire. Now the question is, can we predict the direction that the wire will be pushed? The answer is yes. Remember the animation that shows the wire that moves down. The rule that can tell us the direction of the force is named Fleming left hand rule. The left hand in this play predicted the direction of pushing previously. Fleming's left hand rule states that if the first finger comes with the direction of the magnetic field and points from north to south and the second finger points to the direction of the conventional current which is from positive to negative then the thumb will show the direction of the force that pushes the wire. To study this part, you need to have a perfect 3D imagination. This part of the syllabus has nothing theoretical to say, but the indication of each finger in Fleming's left hand rule. The hand you see now in the video is a left hand that is applying Fleming's left hand rule. This finger with the black arrow is named the pointer or the index finger. Here is named the first finger. The middle finger is named here the second finger. And we all know the thumb, no any other names are known for it. The first finger points to the direction of the magnetic field, which is from north to south. The second finger points to the direction of the conventional current, which is from positive to negative. If these two fingers are applied correctly to the case, you have then the thumb pointing to the direction of the pushing force, the thrust. Sure this is not enough to understand it perfectly. Lots of examples are needed with much patience. I hope you have some. Now we will explain seven different examples. Example 1. This is the magnet and this is the wire. Now press the pause button if you want to think about the answer yourself. The dotted black arrow shown indicates the direction of the magnetic field from north to south. This is how Fleming left hand rule is applied. The first finger points with the magnetic field direction from north to south. In this case, pointing inside the page. The current is given by the second finger and it's from left to right. According to these directions, Fleming's left hand rule shows that that the wire will be pushed upwards, as shown by the thumb. Example 2. This is the magnet and this is the wire. Now press the pause button if you want to think about the answer yourself. The dotted black arrow shown indicates the direction of the magnetic field from north to south. This is how Fleming's left hand rule is applied. The first finger to the magnetic field from north to south, inside the page. The current is given by the second finger and it's from right to left. According to these directions, Fleming's left hand rule show that the wire will be pushed downwards as shown by the thumb. 
Example 3. The magnet, the wire. Now press the pause button if you want to think about it yourself. The dotted black arrow shown indicates the direction of the magnetic field from north to south. This is how Fleming's left hand rule is applied. The first finger the magnetic field from north to south, in this case upwards. The current is given by the second finger and it's from left to right. According to these directions, Fleming's left hand rule shows that the wire will be pushed out of the page as shown by the thumb. Example 4. The magnet. This is the wire. Press the pause button if you want to think about it yourself. The dotted black arrow shown indicates the direction of the magnetic field from north to south. This is how Fleming's left hand rule is applied. The first finger to the magnetic field, from north to south in this case from left to right. The current by the second finger and it's downwards, related to the page. According to these directions, Using the same rule, the wire will also be pushed out of the page as shown by the thumb. Example 5. This is the magnet and this is the wire. Now press the pause button if you want to think about the answer yourself. The dotted black arrow shown indicates the direction of the magnetic field from north to south. This is how Fleming's left hand rule is applied. The first finger points to the magnetic field from north to south. In this case, from left to right. The current is given by the second finger and it's upward related to the page. According to these directions of the magnetic field and the current, Fleming's left hand rule will show that the wire will be pushed into the page as shown by the thumb. Example number 6. This is the magnet and this is the wire. Note here that a circle with an X or a cross inside it indicates a wire that is perpendicular to the page where the current is going into the page. Now press the pause button if you want to think about the answer yourself. The dotted black arrow shown indicates the direction of the magnetic field from north to south. This is how Fleming's left hand rule is applied. The first finger the magnetic field from north to south which is upwards. The direction of the current is given by the second finger which is into the page. According to these directions, the wire will be pushed to the right as shown by the thumb. Example 7. This is the magnet and this is the wire. Note here that the circle with a dot inside it indicates a wire that is perpendicular to the page where the current is going out of the page. Now press the pause button if you want to think about the answer yourself. The dotted black arrow shown indicates the direction of the magnetic field from north to south. This is how Fleming's left hand rule is applied. The first finger to the magnetic field from north to south, in this case upwards. The direction of the current is given by the second finger and it's out of the page. According to these directions, Fleming's left hand rule show that the wire will be pushed to the left as shown by the thumb. Usually the question asks about the direction of the pushing force on the wire, which is given by the thumb. The directions are identified related to the paper, not to the student. In this example, the thumb is pointing to the right of the page. Here the thumb is pointing to the left of the page. This thumb points upwards as it points to the top of the page. But this thumb points downwards as it points to the bottom of the page. What about this hand? It seems to the student to be pointing upwards. Actually, the thumb in this case is pointing out of the page, but not upwards. Many students mix between upwards direction and the out of the page direction. Finally, for this hand, some students may think of it as pointing downwards, but actually the thumb in this case is pointing into the page, but not downwards. We describe directions related to the page, not related to ourselves. Reversing directions. The three diagrams drawn in the table are for the same case. By applying Fleming's left hand rule on the current and the magnetic field directions, all the cases will show the same direction of pushing to the left of the page. Now in the first case we will reverse the direction of the current only. The direction of the magnetic field is maintained the same. Fleming's left hand rule shows that the direction of pushing will be to the right. So we can say that if current is only reversed, the 
direction of the force is also reversed. Now look at the second case. In this case, we will reverse the magnetic field only, but the current is maintained the same. Fleming's left hand rule shows that the direction of pushing will be to the right. So we can easily say that if magnetic field only is reversed, the force direction is also reversed. In the third case, we will reverse both the magnetic field and the current. Fleming's left hand rule shows that the direction of pushing will be to the left, which is the same direction as the original case. So we can say that if both current and the magnetic field are reversed, no change in the direction of the force. We can ask another question. Can we cause a stronger pushing force on the wire? To increase the pushing force on the wire, we must change things. Change number one. This change does not need any replace for any apparatus. Changing the wire from a single loop wire into a coil will cause more of the wire to be exposed to the magnetic field and hence more force. There is something more to say. A coil with greater number of turnings will increase the force on the wire. So we can say, increase number of turnings of the wire. Another change that can increase the force on the wire is replacing the magnet with a stronger one. This will increase the strength of the magnetic field on the wire, and hence the force will get stronger. So we can say, use a stronger magnet. Change number three. We can also replace the battery with a stronger one. The stronger battery can produce a larger current, so force in the wire will be increased. We can say, increase the current intensity. Change number four. Change number four is like change number one. It does not need any change in the apparatus. Just bring the poles of the magnet closer to each other. This will cause the magnetic field to be stronger. We can say, bring the poles closer. So we can increase the force on the wire by some changes. Number one, increasing number of turnings of the wire. Number two, use a stronger magnet. Number three, increase the current intensity. Number four, bring the poles closer. Before ending this part, a last case has to be discussed. Actually, there is a case where a wire that carries an electric current is placed inside the magnetic field, but no force is applied on the wire. These are the poles of the magnet, and this is the wire. The dotted black arrow shows the direction of the magnetic field. It is clear from the diagram that the current and the magnetic field are parallel to each other. In this case, the wire will not move. If the current in the wire is parallel to the magnetic field lines, there will be no force in the wire. Even if the current is reversed, the wire will not move, as the current and the magnetic field are still parallel to each other.